this is the best diet for Indian people to be building muscle. Look, I get it. You're an Indian man and you've been looking at all the white people around you and wondering why you don't have a physique like them. You know what? It's because the white person has a different diet. Our Indian food is not tailored for us to build muscle. It simply isn't that way because you think about our culture. Who the fuck in India lifts weights? Who prioritizes their exercise? Absolutely no one. And that's why you see everybody looking skinny, fat, ugly, disgusting, flabby, bitch, titty, skinny arm physique. Okay? Now, I look that way too. But I put in the work and I figured out the diet that works to build muscle. Now, you don't need to eat like the white people. You can still have our Indian South Asian food and build muscle. So I'm going to show you that right now. But first, I'm going to explain why you need to eat this way so that you understand and then you can implement things on a step-by-step basis. But before I get into it, if you want help building a Greek god physique, meaning having Thick arms, wide shoulders, a six-pack where you walk down the street and you see a girl look at you and she is staring at your arms. Where you're in America and you literally have white girls all over you because of the physique that you have built. It's not possible, right? It actually is. Click the first link in the description right now because I have done that very thing. Okay? I am the Indian man here in the middle of fucking Dallas, Texas. I go into the gym and I'm being stared at by all of these gym girls. And it's because I've built this fucking physique. Now, I've made this transformation and I'm making it my personal fucking mission to bring as many Indian men alongside with me on this journey because you can do it too. I'm serious. I made it happen and you can fucking do it too and I will guarantee it because I will work so fucking hard to make sure you get the results because I believe in this. Man, too many of us are skinny fat for our whole lives and it really just isn't worth it, man. It's a shame for a man to live his whole life and not live up to his potential. So click the first link in the description right now and let's get into the diet video. There's something called macronutrients and your macronutrients are proteins, carbohydrates, and fats. Now I've listed the tier list right here, ordering from most important to least important. The most important macronutrient is going to be protein when it comes to building muscle. Number two is fat and number three is carbs. What order are these nutrients most prevalent in Indian diet? It would be the exact opposite. Most prevalent is carbs then fat, then protein. Meaning, the macronutrient that is most important for building muscle is in the least quantity in the Indian diet. It's interesting. That's probably it's one of the big reasons why Indian people don't build any muscle because they don't get enough protein. So, how much protein do you need to be eating then? Well, you probably need to eat more than you are right now. If you measure in pounds in America, you want to have one gram of protein per pound of body weight. Meaning, if you are 100 pounds, you want to have 100 grams of protein. If you are 200 pounds, you want to have 200 grams of protein. Now, in kilograms, 2.2 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. So, if you're 45 kilos, you're going to have 100 grams of protein. If you're 90 kilos, you're going to have 200 grams of protein. Super simple. And the reason is because protein is the literal building block of muscle. Literally, like your your body takes protein and turns it into muscle through a process called muscle protein synthesis. Now, if your body does not have protein, it cannot build muscle. It's as simple as that. And that's why most of us are destined to live our lives as being skinny, fat, flabby, gynecomastia, bitch, titty physiques. There's this belief that it's just the genetics and Indian men have the worst muscle building genetics because that's what you see. But it's actually a cultural phenomenon. It's not a genetic thing. Genetically, we are able to build muscle because back in the day, our people were warriors, our people were explorers, our people were nomads, our people were strong. And you can be too. It's not your genetics. It's simply the amount of protein that you're eating. So you need to have more protein. Now let's talk about carbs and why carbs are actually hindering you from building muscle. So I've written here, carbs are a double-edged sword, probably the cause of being skinny fat for most people. And the reason why it's a double-edged sword is because 
if you're not fully in ketosis, meaning using fat for energy, you need carbohydrates as an energy source. But the problem is, is that most people eat way more carbohydrates than they actually need. You don't need that many carbs as your energy, but usually you just cope and be like, oh, well, I need to be energy. I need to grow, whatever. So I'm going to have a fuck ton of carbs and I'm going to shove all these rotis and all this rice down my throat. No, you don't need that. You only need a small amount of carbs, actually less than you think. And you can usually just get that from fruits and dairy. And you don't even need to have rice, roti, aloo, whatever it is. And the reason why excess carbohydrates is bad for you is something called the glucose insulin response. When you consume carbohydrates, it's broken down by our stomach into its most basic form, which is glucose, which is a form of sugar. Now, when the glucose enters the bloodstream, our body needs to put that glucose to good work, and it secretes something called insulin. Insulin's job is to take that glucose and either store it in the muscles or the liver as glycogen, a fancy word for saying energy, or store it in the fat cells as fat. Now, what happens is that our glycogen stores get filled up pretty quickly, especially if you're not doing exercise and you're not burning your glycogen, most of the carbohydrates that you eat are going straight to fat stores. On top of it, building your fat stores, building your intramuscular fat, building your abdominal fat, it really builds your abdominal fat, which is why we get this skinny fat look. Insulin also blocks the production of testosterone, growth hormone, and muscle protein synthesis, meaning... If you're constantly in a state where you're causing this insulin response and you're constantly eating carbohydrates, it means your body is constantly producing insulin. If you're always in a state of of high insulin, then you're always going to be in a state of low testosterone and growth hormone production as well as low muscle protein synthesis. So you're not letting your body produce the hormones and do the processes that it needs to build a good physique, further digging your own grave into perpetual skinny fatness. So let's get into the exact diet that you need to do to actually start building some muscle. This is the diet. So I've listed by main, supplementary, optional, eat less of, and avoid completely. So the main things that you want to be eating to build muscle are meat, eggs, nuts, dairy, paneer, and fruits. Now I understand for religious reasons that you might not be able to eat meat, and that's completely okay. If you can't, you just cross that out and just have the rest of these. You're still going to get plenty of protein by just eating these foods. But the reason I put meat as number one is because the quality of protein when it comes to building muscle is definitely going to be the highest. Now, I know in our culture, we typically are eating foods like chicken. It's a lot of chicken, really. But you actually want to be prioritizing red meat because red meat has far more nutrients and complete proteins than chicken. It also has more fat and fat is actually very, very nutritious and it helps us build muscle, especially when we're decreasing the amount of carbohydrates. Every person out there is getting the ratio wrong. You don't want more carbs than fat. You want more fat than carbs and then protein above all. So that's why I'm saying red meat. Now, if you're not comfortable eating beef, there's some great options like lamb, goat, or mutton. These are really high in nutrients and will still get you 95% of the benefits you can get from beef. Now, if you're in America, you can have things like bison, venison, elk, um, deer, all, all these kinds of like, all these like wild gamey animals are going to be really nutritious as well. Now, if you're not eating meat, you need to eat 10 eggs a day. No question asked. Okay. But if you are eating meat, you still can eat 10 eggs a day and that could be your whole diet. But you want to have as many eggs as your body can handle. And do not worry. Eggs will not give you high cholesterol. Eggs will not cause heart disease. This is another misconception. Yes, eggs are high in cholesterol, but it's something called dietary cholesterol. Dietary cholesterol is not going to give you heart disease. It's not going to raise something called blood cholesterol. Blood cholesterol actually is another effect of having chronically high insulin, meaning when you're having a ton of carbs, your body always has insulin present. And because insulin blocks growth hormone, testosterone, and muscle protein synthesis, your body wants to lower those insulin levels so that it can get and start doing these processes again. So what happens is it raises something called 
LDL cholesterol in the blood. And LDL cholesterol will lower your insulin. But what it also does is it, it causes buildup of arterial plaque and leads to symptoms of, of cardiovascular disease. Arterial buildup is really, really bad for us. And that's what causes heart attacks. It causes high blood pressure. So in order to avoid that, we really want to decrease the carbohydrates and increase the fats through stuff like meat and eggs. Next thing is nuts. Nuts are also, they're low in, they're low in carbohydrates, high in fat, and high in fiber. Fiber is really good for your digestion, and it's going to help flush your whole body when as you're adjusting to this newer diet. Next thing is dairy. Obviously, dairy is very nutritious. Every mammal, when they're born is fed a diet of exclusively dairy. The reason is because it's very nutritious and it helps us grow. Now, it's not as nutritious as meat, eggs, or nuts, but dairy is very, very good and you want to be consuming it every single day in your diet. Last thing is paneer. This is our desi version of cottage cheese. Now, paneer is really, really good. It's 50% protein, 50% fat, absolutely zero carbohydrates. It doesn't get any better than that when it comes to building muscle. You're getting a ton of fats and a ton of proteins. Another thing that I didn't mention about fats is that fats are the basis of all of your hormones, like testosterone, like vitamin D, like growth hormone, and all the other million hormones that are in your body. You need fat to build them. And particularly, it's actually the cholesterol in the fat. So cholesterol is really, really healthy for you. And you might ask, well, Nikhil, why do I need testosterone? Well, high testosterone is going to lead to a whole host of cascading effects that will help you build more muscle. Number one, you're going to have more energy. More energy means you'll be able to go harder in the gym. Number two, you'll actually be physically stronger. So you'll be able to lift more weights. Now, lifting more weights, lifting heavier weights is important because it creates something called muscle damage. And muscle damage helps you build more muscles. Number three is you're going to have better sleep and better recovery. Your body is going to recover faster from the damage that you create, building more muscle and allowing you to get into the gym faster again and do the same workout. So testosterone is really, really important as well as it regulates a whole host of health, health processes that our body needs to be staying healthy and happy. Now, this is the only form of carbohydrates that I've included in the main diet, and that is fruits. Fruits are full of vitamins and minerals. They're also very hydrating, which is good. We also, we want to be staying hydrated. Another thing that we want to put in here is just water. Drink tons of water, but you'll get a ton of water from fruits as well. So include fruits on the daily diet. Supplementary, these are, this is typical foods in the Indian diet. Dal, if you're in an Indian household, these foods are going to be made, right? So instead of having like the roti or the rice, have more of the dal, have more of the rajma, whatever is made, have more of the, whatever bean is being made, the chane, the, the dal, eat that stuff more. Um, because it's actually, that is, has a higher protein content than any form of carbohydrate. Now I know I've been talking shit on carbohydrates, but these are the only acceptable forms that I'm going to allow you to eat as well as fruit. So have the dal, have the rajma, have the chane, it's very high in fiber, very high in protein, but it's still a carbohydrate at the end of the day. Um, but I give you permission to eat these as long as the main foods are the majority of your diet, then you supplement with dal and these kinds of things. And then optional is sabji. Like you can have sabji, you don't really need it because if you're having a bunch of red meat, you're getting enough nutrients. But if you want to have sabji, if you enjoy sabji, if there's like certain things you really like, then eat it. It's no big deal. I'm not going to, I'm not going to chew you out for that. Like it's a very integral part of Indian culture. If your mom is making sabji and you're like, you can't get away without eating it, fine. It's okay. Just make sure you're getting your meat, your eggs, your nuts, your dairy, your paneer fruits and water and prioritizing more of the dal over the sabji. When whoever is cooking it, ask them to cook it with less oil. Vegetables cooked in oil is usually not best for you. The only kind of oil that you want to be consuming is the one that comes out out of the meat, meaning the natural fat that is already in the meat or the egg yolk. That is the fat that is good for you or the fat that's in the paneer. The fat that is added afterwards, vegetable oil, that stuff is really, really bad for you. It's very inflammatory. It's actually going to keep you in skinny fat syndrome for the rest of your life. Now, here are the things I want you to eat less of. It's roti and rice. Now, most people are going to have two to three rotis with, with breakfast, lunch, dinner. 
and it ends up being a lot of excess carbohydrates. It's also, these things are like, it's literally just bread and bread is not good for you. Bread is inflammatory. Our body really doesn't know how to process bread. Depending on the atta that you're using, it could have gluten and that stuff is it's not good for you. It's really hard to it's really hard to digest and it's going to interfere with the muscle building process, particularly because it causes that glucose insulin response that I talked about earlier. Same thing with rice. Rice rice digests a whole lot easier than than a roti, but um Still, it's the same thing. Like it's going to cause massive spikes in our glucose and massive spikes in insulin, which is a going to lead to higher blood cholesterol, which causes heart disease, as well as interfering with testosterone growth hormone and muscle protein synthesis, all of which we don't want. So pretty self-explanatory. What we want to avoid completely is fried food, sweets, desserts, processed foods, and tofu. These are all the devil. These will prevent you from building muscle. These are really, really bad for you. Fried food like pakore, like uh, batura, like fucking any fucking fried food that you have. If you're in America, f- there's fried food on every fucking corner. Avoid it. Fried food is so bad for you. I, I just like, come on. Like, this is really going to, this is like heart disease plus, this is carbo, this is like glucose insulin plus seed oils plus trans fats plus so many different things that are going to contribute to you getting heart disease. Sweets, desserts, obviously, this is pure sugar. This is the glucose insulin response to the maximum. It's really going to contribute to raising your levels of LDL blood cholesterol, which is going to contribute to arterial plaque buildup and you dying of a heart attack. Last thing is anything that's processed. We don't know what they're doing in the processing in the processing process or whether it's artificial flavoring, artificial preservatives, any kinds of seed oils, all of this stuff is going to is going to uh, get in the way of you building muscle and having that Greek god physique. Going on the Greek god physique, if you want that Greek god physique and you still are confused after watching my video, click the first link in the description right now and I can help you. The last thing is tofu and you might think tofu, well tofu is actually healthy like it has high protein, but tofu has something something called estrogenics. Now, estrogenics, meaning tofu has compounds in it that are similar to estrogen. Now, it's not not actually estrogen, but your body thinks it is estrogen when you eat it. So what happens is your body thinks you have higher levels of estrogen than you actually have, and then your body's really good at balancing. So because it thinks you have higher levels, levels of estrogen, it's going to lower your testosterone to balance out. Now, all of a sudden, you have more estrogen and less testosterone, and this is what leads to gynecomastia. Like, I'm serious. It's called estrogenics. If you want more information on this, read the book Estrogeneration by Dr. Anthony J. This will give you all the information that you need to know on estrogenics. They're everywhere. They come from tofu. They come from microplastics. They come from a whole host of sources. So you want to avoid tofu like your life depends on it because you do not want those estrogens getting into your body and lowering your testosterone. Remember what I said, testosterone is absolutely crucial for muscle growth for a whole host of reasons. So avoid the estrogens like hell. The last strategies to consider for lifting weights, uh, for building muscle, I want you to think about supplementing with protein powder if you can't get enough protein in your diet. I understand, especially if you're vegetarian, there's only so many eggs you can eat, right? Protein powder is completely okay if you really just cannot get enough protein. So get away if you are if you're not vegetarian, get a whey isolate protein or even get a whey casein blend. I recommend a whey casein blend because of the way that it digests in your body. You're going to be getting protein absorption all day. So get a whey casein brand protein powder, have one or even two scoops a day, and you you can all of a sudden be getting like anywhere from 20 to 60 grams of additional protein per day. That's really fucking good, and that can help you get that can help you push you over the mark of getting enough protein per day and really making enough gains. Now another uh, strategy consider to consider is something called intermittent fasting. If you struggle with the problem of actually eating too much rather than not eating enough protein, consider intermittent fasting where you only eat within an eight-hour window of each day. This is 
on top of like controlling your eating habits, it has a whole host of effects that are really, really beneficial for your body called ketosis. It's going to raise your testosterone, raise your growth hormone, raise a whole bunch of things, actually help you build muscle even though you're eating in a smaller window. Think about hunter-gatherers back in the day. They were constantly in a fasted state because they didn't know when their next meal was going to end up. And then they would eat the meal, have a ton. They would kill the animal, have a ton of food, and then be back into a fasted state just a few days later. The last thing is diet doesn't work if you don't lift heavy weights. So you need to lift heavy in order to make gains. If you're not lifting heavy, you're fucked, right? If you're, then you're just eating a fuck ton of protein and you're pissing it out because your body has no reason to use any of this protein. In order, in order for your body to actually do muscle protein synthesis, you need to lift heavy weights. You need to tell your body, hey, I need to do muscle protein synthesis. Like, I need to, you need to create muscle damage in order to build muscle. It's as simple as that. So that is the video. If you want a Greek God physique, if you are a skinny fat Indian man and you're tired of being ignored, you're tired of girls looking at you and thinking you're ugly. You're tired of looking like you're feeling like you're not confident. You're tired of all the white people around you, all the other people around you having insane physiques. You see people on Instagram with insane physiques and you think, why can't I have that myself? Click the first link in the description right now. Have a good day.